what more could he say other than I didn't do it? And he said that on the road here. He, you know, it's hard to prove a negative. Molly, I can say you stole my pen. Prove you didn't do it. How would you prove it? Say you didn't do it, right? I mean, it's sort of where we're at. Lawyer Joe Tacopina there making a case for defendant Trump at one of the many courthouses where Trump faces these criminal trials. You see Tacopina right there at the defense table, a key figure for Trump's criminal cases in New York and his civil case in New York. And he has been viewed as a legal asset with a long history of trial court wins, as the New York Times reports, and a very assertive style, which Tacopina displays both in court and in interviews. You may recall that one. Well, he's back in the news now because he's now exited both of these Trump cases that he was working on, the New York criminal trial and where you just heard the quote from, the sound we just heard, the Carroll defamation case. The timing is striking because both of these cases have actually been heating up. And this comes after reported clashes among several Trump lawyers. Now, we have news on this tonight. I mentioned earlier in the show, and I'm going to share it with you now because Taco Pina is actually making his first public remarks about all of this to MSNBC's Al Sharpton. I left the team because it was just my time. There were things that just didn't work out for me, um, that didn't make me want to continue in that role. I had to fo follow my compass, and, and my compass told me it was my time there was done. Those are the new remarks. The interview also featured a striking warning for his now former client, defendant Donald Trump. Takapina says it's absolutely possible that Trump could be convicted, especially in the other cases where Takapina was not the lawyer handling it. He also notes Jack Smith is a serious force. The Manhattan DA's case that I was on, I don't think that's a strong case. There's other cases. There's Georgia, there's Washington, D.C. You think some those, of them are strong cases? Those are serious cases. Um, the two federal cases are serious cases, um, and, and I think they're, they're uh, not to be taken lightly. Is it possible Donald Trump could end up convicted of, a, of, of one of these cases in your mind? Oh, is it possible? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, that's farther than Takapina needs to go in discussing this in public. It may reflect his pure legal view of the damning evidence in that Jack Smith case. Or it may also reflect or include some sort of shade in those reported tensions between Takapina, who had the New York cases, and his now former colleagues, the other Trump lawyers handling the Smith case. Indeed, we heard from one of them just last week. Now, the appeals courts will soon decide if the coup case bought, bought by Jack, brought by Jack Smith, which you see there read on appeal right now, will actually happen in March or gets delayed. Takapina's old case is slated to begin after that, and the calendar you see here is Trump's rocky year. Trump needs all the lawyers he can handle for all these different defenses, so the new exits may leave a vacuum for other Trump lawyers, some of whom have clearly struggled in court. That's a real-world event, which SNL mocked this weekend. Thank you, Alina. You're great on TV. <laughs> Maybe the worst lawyer I've ever had, which is quite an accomplishment. <laughs> Look at this team. This is the bottom of the barrel, folks. This is who said yes. I'm in the lead for president, and this is the best I can get. Feels like a red flag, no? Well, <laughs> you're not getting paid, by the way. You know that, of course you do. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'll see you at Shakey's. You can get out of here. <laughs> this is how we live now. Some of the punchlines may ring true. We know Trump prizes loyal and public arguments, sometimes even over people's actual courtroom performances. When Tacopino was here, he was one of the most passionate Trump lawyers we've seen. I bought a car and I wrote, uh, I, I purchased a horse. Mm -hmm. that's, that's inaccurate. That's a lie, maybe. But there's no crime there. You seem to be putting forward a defense that's the kind we've heard from Trump before, that, well, other people are just doing these things, so he's not in on it. And the people is his lawyer who's advising him. Okay. Here's why it's not a lie. Could you, could did you, you know paper, about this? Did you, did the you, paper down. Uh, let, me, let me answer. Did you know about this? Yeah, no, no, I don't. No, we don't need that. Now, to be clear, there are several Trump lawyers who've exited without any incident. Trump aides in the non-legal political context are known for a lot of turnover. But other lawyers have also left Trump's employ under a lot more duress because of Trump's conduct, alleged behavior, and sometimes proven behavior. Trump has turned his own lawyers into witnesses with alleged demands that they break the law. Or, as you see here, worse, there's a trail of lawyers that have been indicted and now convicted because of what they did, not for themselves, not for some sort of personal enrichment, but for Trump. 
And that's where this story goes well beyond any kind of personnel update. Trump awaits a RICO trial in Georgia. Several of his lawyers cannot defend him there in that looming trial, among the others I showed you, because they've already been convicted of their own crime or crimes for his plots to overthrow the election. Some turned repentant, like Jenna Ellis, who went from defending Trump and lying about the election when we heard from her back in 2020 to trying to take it all back as she pled guilty. If I knew then what I know now, I would have declined to represent Donald Trump in these post-election challenges. I look back on this whole experience with deep remorse. Deep remorse, which has proven more common for the lawyers than for the client, who shows none of that remorse, doesn't even say, separate from denying criminal liability, whether anything could have done better or differently. And so while this is a very separate track, as it's supposed to be independent and nonpartisan from the election that is going on and the voting tomorrow and the other issues we discussed with now one remaining candidate, Nikki Haley, against Trump, this is very much the question for the country this year. Do you look at the evidence and decide that this person should or should not be returned to power? Or do you look at the legal process if it is allowed to go forward and find that if he's convicted by a jury of his peers, that weighs on you? And Donald Trump, having gotten fewer votes against Biden in 20, fewer votes than Clinton in 16 when he got the Electoral College, well, he can't afford to lose that many more votes. So while the processes must be independent, I've told you that before, the outcome, the impact, well, it could all come crashing together before Election Day.